I'm Diren, lead engineer at Masari. For the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be going on a research journey using the Masari tools. Uh, so we'll be kicking off the journey in the feed tab of Masari, where we stumbled upon uh, an article written by Ryan Watkins, uh, one of our research analysts. So um, we're seeing here the evolution of value on Ethereum and reading through this article, uh, I myself, uh, as an analyst, um, I would pose uh, two questions uh, that I will be investigating on. The first one is the impact of stable coins and DeFi onto the Ethereum platform. And the second one is how does Ethereum, uh, which is the old oldest smart contract platform, uh, compare with some of the newer smart contract platforms. So we'll kick off our analysis here on the left side uh, in the screener tab in the community screener section. Uh, uh, and we'll be drilling into the smart contract platforms. So the community section is, is a section populated by not only the Masari research channels, but also by the Masari community who uh, chooses uh, to share their screeners and insights uh, into the screener section. So now I am in a smart contract uh, platform screener. And the first thing I'll do is I'll click copy to edit in order to add this to my screener section. Uh, from here, I can make edits and uh, derive insights for things that might be interesting. So first thing, let's filter on real volume, and let's filter out the crypto assets with low volume. Um, the second thing that I'll do is uh, I'll add active addresses as a uh, metric, and I'll add transaction volume, uh, both on-chain and uh, the USD corresponding value. Um, and the last filter that I'll, I'll apply on this screener is filter by transaction volume for anything uh, that is greater than 1 million. So that trims down the smart contract platforms to these six ones. And let's uh, see if we can uh, derive some insights off of this. So if we sort by the number of transactions that happen on the blockchains themselves. We see uh, that Tron uh, has a bunch of transactions happening over 24 hours. Um, but if we search uh, sort by active addresses uh, and transaction volume, we see, uh, we're getting another picture, which is um, even though there's a lot of transactions that's happening, um, many are happening with uh, the similar or same addresses. Um, uh, and the number of value that is transferred, it's much greater still on the Ethereum platform. The second thing that uh, I would like to investigate on is DeFi. So doing the same thing, uh, I'm going to copy this community screener uh, into my screener section, and I will sort this by real volume. Um, and from this, what I can see is of the DeFi coins, um, the top ones are decentralized exchange coins and um, with DAI being the fourth one in this list. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll create a brand new screener and I'll explore something that we at Masari, we are obsessed about uh, and that is supply. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll add these three columns uh, into my screener. There we go. Uh, I'm playing whack-a-mole with myself. All right, let's see. Let's see this. So we have uh, Y plus 10 market cap. Uh, y plus 10 percentage supply issued. Um, and there's one more that 
I would like to add into this, which is stock flow. Um, and the reason why we, I'm sorry, are obsessed about supply is supply is the backbone to uncovering the story uh, behind a crypto asset. It allows us to provide the current valuation of a given asset using the reporting market cap the, or the liquid market cap, as well as project the future valuation using the Y plus 10 market cap, uh, that is supply times the current price. And we can also uh, check on the scarcity of a token uh, on a specific crypto asset. So with the stock to flow uh, metric, what we're observing here is given the number of tokens issued uh, at this current rate, how many years would it take to resupply to the current amount of, uh, let's say, Bitcoin? So in this case of Bitcoin, this would take 55 years, uh, which is a fairly uh, scarce asset. Uh, in reference, gold hovers around 62. Um, so next up, we're going to explore some charts. Um, so what I'll do is I'll create a chart here. And specifically what I want to do is I wanna check the impact of COVID. Um, so first I'll switch to Ethereum price and I'll compare Ethereum with a couple of traditional assets, so S&P 500 and crude oil. Um, next, I'm going to add COVID worldwide cases. And at this point, you'll notice the graph is not very useful. Um, so I'll make a couple of adjustments here. I'll change the interval to one day. That doesn't really help much. So uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll move the COVID metrics to its own y-axis. And I'll do the same thing for uh, these ones. Sorry, I fat fingered the exit button. So I'll do the same thing for these two other ones. Um, and the last thing that I'll add is a volume. So now we're, we're getting a much better picture here. And from this chart, we clearly see the impact of Black Thursday on the market, um, both in terms of the volume as well as the price change. Um, and we can compare the price change of Ethereum uh, alongside with S&P 500 and crude oil. Uh, there's, there's one last uh, chart that I want us to explore together, that is, the Ethereum platform chart. Um, and this chart, at this point, not seeing much of anything useful, but we are seeing the comparison between Ethereum as well as a number of stable coins that are traded on the Ethereum platform. If I switch this, uh, since it's a multi-series, to a stacked bar chart, now we're getting a much better picture of uh, what is being traded on Ethereum as well as the percentage uh, of things that are being traded. So I, I can zoom in and out. And what I'm noticing here is towards the end of last year, 2019, the DeFi uh, stable coins are, have become a, an increasing per percentage on the Ethereum platform. Um, but these days, the dominance have sort of uh, leveled off um, on the Ethereum platform. Now the astute a uh, student here would notice that USDT is traded on both um, Ethereum, Tron, and Omni. So this chart is only an approximation, um, but it gives a general sense of uh, the relative percentage of stable coins uh, versus ETH transfers on the Ethereum platform. 
So in conclusion, this has been a sneak peek of what our research analysts do on a daily basis with our tools. Um, you'll find our analyses available in the community section, um, and we will publish them um, right here uh, in both the chart and the screener tabs as we create more analyses. Um, and the last point I want to make is we are hiring. Uh, so if you are hungry to build uh, and are passionate about this space, feel free to message me or message Ryan on Hopin, and we will be happy to talk to you.